Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tabletnews.net broadcasting. What's up guys, this is Johnny for tabletnews.net. Today we're going to have a closer look at Google's operating system Android Ice Cream Sandwich and we're going to look at the major differences between the UI, the user interface on the phone and the UI on the tablet. So let's get started. Most people don't know that the operating system reads out the LCD density of your device. So um, depending on how low or how high it is, it will display either the tablet UI or the phone UI. So we're not going to get into detail on how to actually change the LCD density on your device. What we're going to do is we're going to have a closer look at why would you change it, what are the differences, and so on. So here we have a Samsung Galaxy Nexus next to an Amazon Kindle Fire, which are both running Android 4.0. And yes, both of them are running on a custom ROM, although the major differences between the user interfaces remain, so that won't be a problem. So first, let's look at the home screen. You will notice on the phone there is a status bar up top, which is missing on the tablet version. You will find those notifications and other options if you tap on the bottom right on the clock or just beside that. And while we're here, we'll go into settings. And you will notice a slightly different layout here as well. While on the tablet version, the screen is divided so you're still able to see the menu while you're changing or viewing the options of a specific category. Since there's much less space on a phone's display, you won't be able to see the whole menu when pressing on one of those categories. So instead of having it on the side, it will pop up and give you the option to change it there. And then a simple tap on the back button will bring back up the menu for you to change something else or to go back to the home screen. And not only the operating system itself changes its user interface depending on what kind of LCD density your device has, also app developers increasingly built that option into their apps. So um, the same app will look different on a phone than it will look on a tablet. You probably know this already if you ever used a tablet, but let me show you some quick examples. See, if I start YouTube on the smartphone, you will see this uh, simple list. You can just scroll down. You have up top here the home browse and account button. If I log in, there will be some, even some more options. But this is how the layout looks on YouTube version 3.5.5. Let's look into the tablet. We'll start the same app, YouTube 3.5.5. You notice right away it looks completely different. You have this beautiful 3D layout. Other than that, of course, the same options. And again, the screen is divided, so you can scroll between categories while watching at the results. And this is one of the major differences you see throughout all tablet-optimized apps. Since you have much more space on a tablet, it really makes sense, and it makes it a lot easier to go through settings or to browse through uh, categories and stuff like that. Also, pictures, very beautiful. And the numbers of tablet optimized apps are constantly increasing, so we expect a whole lot of exciting stuff coming up. But for now, I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If we missed something out or you have any questions, just write us a comment below. Again, thanks for watching. This is Johnny for tabletnews.net. Tabletnews.net broadcasting.